Hello, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Today's guest is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to alternative medicine. Today I have Dr. Lin and Dr. Lin, welcome to the show. Hi, Jeff. Nice to meet you. Yes, yes. Why don't you explain to the viewers uh, what it is that you do? My name is Dr. Lin. Uh, I'm an acupuncturist from Southern Village Acupuncture and Herbology. I, I do acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine. Uh, Dr. Lin, mm -hmm. uh, why don't you explain to the viewers how it is you got into Chinese medicine or why you got into it? Okay. Um, I have been interested in Chinese medicine since I was a college student. So when I was a graduate student in UNC School Pharmacy, I did research on the Chinese herbs. So one of the herbs that I did on my dissertation was turmeric. Uh, I, I studied the components in the turmeric regarding its antiprostate cancer activities. But after five, spending five years um, uh, doing the research on the turmeric, I realized that's not uh, the way that I wanted to study the Chinese herbs. So uh, in the lab, we studied the herbs by using chemistry. But I, I really wanted to study the Chinese herbs from a traditional Chinese doctor's point of view. So in 2006, I decided to uh, really to learn Chinese medicine. And I, I graduated from UNC, and I was very blessed that I found out there was a very good acupuncturist in Merritt Island, Florida. And uh, his name is Hai Xiang Ni, and I asked him if he would like to take me as his apprentice and he agreed. So in 2006, I moved on to Florida, and I went to a school, an acupuncture school in Orlando, but in the meantime, I had apprenticeship with uh, Dr. Ni nee in his clinic. And so during those three years, I observed him practicing Chinese medicine, and uh, I saw him use acupuncture and the Chinese herbs to save a lot of lives. So that was really impressive. And so in 2009, I graduated from the acupuncture school and I got my license from Florida State and I started to practice in my uh, inductionist clinic. And then last year, we moved back to North Carolina and we opened our own clinic at the Southern Village. Wow, very good, interesting <laughs> story. Yeah. So uh, why don't you uh, explain to myself and to the viewers what kind of conditions uh, can be treated with acupuncture? Um, normally, we use acupuncture to treat pain. Acupuncture is very good at relief pain instantly. And in addition to pain, we also use acupuncture to treat insomnia, stress, and infertility. Have you ever had acupuncture? No, I have not. So you want to give it a try? Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> okay. Right, yeah, I have a, a fear of needles. So. <laughs> It's always held me back. But, well, uh, the needle is uh, very thin and it's uh, single-use sterile. So after I uh, insert the needles in there, and when I pull it out, it will be uh, thrown into the sharps container. So okay. So usually, you should not feel sharp pain, but some needle sensation, which include uh, tingle, numbs, uh, and some kind of pressure. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, so mm -hmm. how do you feel? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, I, I mean, it's not too bad. I, I did feel it go in, but um, it's no more than a little prick. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, once it's in, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. yeah. So how long would you typically leave um, or treat someone with this? Uh, if we do acupuncture treatment, usually the needles stay for about 30 minutes. Okay. And then 30 minutes after, I will pull out the needles and, and then patient will free to go. And that's regardless of whatever you're trying to treat? Um, pain, stress, insomnia, and infertility. So okay. that's, the, that's the, uh, what I uh, like to use acupuncture to treat. And for other conditions, I would like to use uh, 
Chinese herbal medicine, which I think is more effective than acupuncture. Can I put my arm down? Yeah, you can put your okay. arm down okay, and great. relax. <laughs> okay. All right, so talk a little bit more about uh, the Chinese herbal medicine and, and how do you use that to treat somebody? Uh, Chinese herbal medicine is uh, one of the major modalities in Chinese medicine. Um, it's not so much well known in the United States. And acupuncture is more well known in here. Uh, but herbal medicine is uh, very popular in China. Okay, we use the herbs to treat pretty much everything. Okay, and so include, uh, we treat, use herbs to treat common cold, flu, uh, allergy, asthma, and we use uh, herbs to treat uh, gynecological problems, cardiovascular problems, digestive problems, and pretty much everything, wow. and it include cancer. Really, and cancer as well. Okay, uh -huh, wow. Yeah, as I just told you, that my uh, my, my my mentor Hai Xiangyi. He used herbs to treat a lot of cancer patients. That's why I said he, I saw him save a lot of lives. Wow. Okay. So, is it, uh, like Western medicine? Is it you know you go and you pop a pill and you feel relief? Mm -hmm. Is that how herbal medicine works, or you have to take it over a long period of time? It depends. If it's an acute condition, and you take the herbs, and the con uh, the problem is gone, then you don't have to take it anymore. But if it's a more like a chronic condition, then you have to take it uh, regularly for a certain period of time until the problem is completely gone, then you can stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> um, when someone comes in to, to see you, what are some signs that you look for? I mean, how do you determine how to treat them? Uh, so there are tr uh, traditional diagnosis of Chinese, med uh, Chinese medicine. We use uh, four ways to do the diagnosis. So we, we will uh, observe, uh, observe the patient's complexion and the posture, and also observe the tongue. And we, we hear patient uh, answering the questions, and then we hear the tone of the voice, and also we will ask questions uh, regarding uh, pa uh, patient's um, regular act, like life, um, sleep, appetite, bowel movement, urination, uh, energy, uh, emotion, that sort of things. And then we will ch check the pulse. Okay, <laughs> wow, very good. So how can diverse health conditions uh, be treated by Chinese medicine? Um, and do you have any examples that you can okay. share with us? Okay, all right, so, so before I, I get into how, I would like to share a case with you. Um, lately, I treat a lady uh, the first time she came in, she had a lot of issues. Uh, she had her, her eyelids, hands, and feet uh, sw were swollen, and then she, uh, she had trouble urina with urination. She, she had no desire to urinate during the day, but had very frequent urination during night. And she had uh, very low energy. She couldn't stand for a long period of time and she had a sore, uh, soreness in her lower back, and her teeth felt very weak, and she had hypertension, diabetes, gout, uh, she had insomnia, uh, a lot of issues went, uh, were going on. So she, she kept saying that it's suffering to live. <laughs> and so I gave her some herbs to take, and after a month, she, she came back, her, her swelling was all gone, and her blood sugar level dropped from 190 to 120, and her hypertension was gone, her blood pressure was normal, and she had normal urination. She, she had the desire to urinate during the day. At, at night, she only got up once to urinate. And she had better appetite, and her sleep was better, and her, her lower back was that sore, so she could stand for a longer period of time, and her teeth get stronger. So she was very happy. The reason that uh, chi the herbal medicine can help her uh, relieve all these kind of symptoms was because uh, we use when we do diagnosis by using Chinese medicine, uh, we we can find out what's going on with 
with her, even though the problems are so complicated. Um, her teeth were weak, her lower back was sore, or, and, and then she had difficulty urina, uh, with urination. This all point to her kidney. Because in Chinese medicine, we, uh, we found the connection between teeth and kidney, and lower back and kidney, and the, the color of the hair with kidney, and the bone in the kidney. So, so, so when her kidney was deficient, her body showed up a lot of sym symptoms in her teeth, lower back, urination, and even bowel movement. Mm. So once her kidney uh, was getting better, then all this symptom was uh, what was was really uh, was going on, going away, away. Wow. right? And so, and her hypertension was gone as well because her hypertension and her diabetes was also due to her uh, kidney deficiency. Hmm. Wow, that's very fascinating. <laughs> wow. So, um, what I wanted to ask you was. Um, Okay, the, the herbs, it's just herbs. I mean, right. it's not medicine. I mean, mm -hmm. why, how come uh, Western medicine has such a hard time either understanding or using herbs? Mm, because the, con uh, the methodology are, are very different. Mm, Western medicine using drugs, the drugs are mm, pure compounds, okay? And so, so the Western medicine start from microscopic level, and Chinese medicine start from macroscopic level. So Western medicine look at everything at the cellular level or even under cellular level. So they look at uh, molecules, cells, receptors. So if it's a whole herb, they, it's hard for them to uh, to study mm -hmm. uh, because it, one herb contains thousands of components. And but the drug is one single component. It's a one. It's a pure chemical structure, so it's easier to study. And if you add just one or two more drugs co together to study the whole pathway, how how the drugs were uh, uh, in uh, were working in the body, it just makes makes the uh, the stu uh, the research too complicated to to. Uh, to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And isn't it true that most drugs are derivatives of herbs? Uh, yes, most of the drugs, 85% of the drugs are natural products or natural products derivatives. Okay, and when did uh, medicine start? And I mean, do you, do you know when it, when it? You mean the when dr dr when drugs, drugs started, yes. About 200 years ago when when chemists was, were able to um, to extract the components from the natural product, uh, from, from herbs. Okay. And so they, they started to get the pure compounds, and that's how drugs started to come to, uh, to, to the world. <laughs> right. So prior to that, Chinese medicine was used for thousands of years, or herbal herbs were used for? Yeah, herbs were used throughout the whole human history until two, two, about 200 years ago, okay. because the prevalence of the drugs then, then herbs start to, uh, the use of herbs as medicine starts to declining. Mm -hmm. But in China, Chinese herbal medicine is still uh, very popular. Okay, so in China, um, is it common um, for a family to go to a Chinese um, herbal doctor? Is that, what, that, that what you, is that what I could call it? Uh, we just call it traditional Chinese doctor. Okay, traditional <laughs> Chinese doctor versus a, um, a general practitioner. A practitioner doctor, here, uh, in, like in Western medicine. Um, in China, yeah, some people they only go to see Chinese doctors, and and some and we we in China we actually don't have family doctors. Mm -hmm. We only uh, go to the hospital when we are sick, and we go to see doctors whoever is working in the hospital. So and so some people they choose when they are sick they choose to see. Uh, the traditional Chinese doctor instead of the um, uh, Western doctors in the hospital. Great, mm -hmm. well, very good. Well, I find this very fascinating, <laughs> and um, I'm sure the viewers probably might ha probably uh, have some more questions as well. So, if, if any of you are interested, 
Uh, Dr. Lin, what's, what's your website where, where they can go to? Uh, www.southernvillageacupuncture.com. Okay, and I'll have that posted at the end of this video as well, so you can go to that website and check it out. And uh, feel free to uh, contact Dr. Lin. Uh, she'd be happy to talk to you, and uh, thank you so much for coming in today. You're welcome. Thank oh, you. Okay, I'll pull it. You want to pull this out now? Yes. Okay, <laughs> very good. Okay. Thanks okay. a lot. See you next time.